On day 61 of this week, students will write their individual projects to wrap up the culminating project and the entire extreme living unit. While the group project presented the product that students designed and built, the individual project reviews that product and explains the science behind it. This consumer report is truly a summative task as it incorporates all of the concepts, knowledge, and skills that students have gained throughout the unit. Remember, each step of the way during the unit, students have been asked to make connections to the culminating project. At the end of each task in the unit, students returned to their project organizer, which laid out the goal of the project right at the beginning. Now, students will synthesize their work and assess it using several rubrics. Each rubric is aligned to one section of the individual project criteria for success. These criteria are laid out both on day 61 and also in students' culminating project expectations handout. There are eight rubrics total, although rubric eight was already used to assess the group project. These rubrics are also three-dimensional. That means that they assess students on the science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts from throughout the unit. Remember, these three components, the SEPs, DCIs, and cross-cutting concepts, are the essential components of an NGSS-aligned unit that contribute to the performance expectations throughout the unit. For example, in this performance expectation, students learn about the connections between the unequal heating of the Earth's surface and patterns of atmospheric and oceanic circulation. The scientific facts and concepts around water, weather, and climate are the disciplinary core ideas, what we may have considered the science standards before NGSS. However, students are now also learning about the scientific and engineering practice developing and using models, a skill that applies to many, many different science concepts. They are also engaging with the cross-cutting concept of systems and system models, not to mention patterns. That's what it means for this unit and this rubric to be three-dimensional. On document page 33 in the unit teacher's guide, there is a very helpful table that provides a breakdown of the rubrics for the individual culminating project. Each student criterion for success is matched where applicable with the science and engineering practice, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concept that goes with it. For instance, let's take a look at rubric four. In writing a detailed description of the climate in the chosen region, students must include models to show the processes that create the water conditions in that region. This will be assessed using rubric number four. This rubric will allow you to assess that student's proficiency with the science and engineering practice of developing and using models, as well as core ideas about the role that water plays in Earth's natural surface processes, and that student's understanding of the broader cross-cutting concept of energy and matter. Notice how not all strands contain all three dimensions. Most contain just two. The rubrics provided then translate these dimensions into assessment categories, from emerging, meaning students are just beginning to demonstrate understanding, to advanced, students are going above and beyond the required level of understanding. Notice the differences between the strands. At first, students who are emerging can still develop a model, although an inaccurate one, or describe incompletely how water circulates around the earth, but not present a model. Students who are developing can describe completely how water circles around the earth, but may have an incomplete model of those processes and systems. Proficient students can develop a partial model by citing either solar energy or the force of gravity as a main cause of the water cycle, while advanced students cite both in a complete model. Remember, students should have already done all of the work associated with this strand during task three, a water molecules journey. In fact, every rubric is directly aligned to one of the tasks from this unit that students have already completed. Students should not be doing much, if any, new research or investigation for the culminating project. Instead, they are synthesizing all that they have already learned and done. The first rubric is directly aligned to the liftoff task from the unit, in which students defined the problem and identified criteria and constraints associated with the extreme climate region they chose to focus on. The second rubric aligns to task one, in which students investigated how the unequal heating of the earth by the sun gives rise to different climate regions. 
Rubric 3 goes with Task 2, about oceanic and atmospheric circulation, while Rubric 4, as we already saw, aligns with Task 3, A Water Molecule's Journey. Rubric 5 allows you to assess how students synthesize all of those concepts into cause and effect relationships that explain regional climate conditions. Rubric 6 aligns to Task 4, in which students ran independent investigations about changes in temperature in order to explore ideas about heat transfer, proportional relationships, and the connections between kinetic energy of particles and temperature. Rubric 7, of course, aligns to Task 5, designing a new product and testing a prototype. And finally, Rubric 8 was already used to assess the group project presentations. Some other things to keep in mind. Ideally, we'd love for all of our students to reach the advanced level on every rubric. However, the proficient level represents successful demonstration of the rubric criteria. Just as in the annual New York State math and ELA exams, a level three represents acceptable grade level achievement. A level four means above and beyond. While it's possible to give students a numeric grade based on an average of all rubrics, this may not represent their actual achievement. After all, if they score a three on each rubric, that means they met all of the expectations for proficiency. However, that would give them a score of 24 out of 32, which is only a 75%. Does 75% really represent meeting all of the criteria as expected? Every school has its own grading policies, but I recommend distinguishing between a numerical or percentage score and achievement on a rubric. Ultimately, you will have to decide for yourself how or to what extent student achievement on the rubrics translates to numerical grades in a gradebook if you're required to do so. Another consideration is that assessing every student on eight separate rubrics is a lot of work. I myself am responsible for grading about 130 students. 130 times eight means I would be assessing 1,040 individual rubrics. It might be better to instead prioritize rubrics based on what skills you want to assess your students on, taking into consideration what you've already learned this year. For example, perhaps earlier this year you already assessed students closely in asking questions and defining problems, skills that often get covered in the beginning of a year of science. You might then skip using Rubric 1 entirely this time around, or you might make sure to include it in order to measure student growth on those skills. Feel free to pick and choose the rubrics according to your own priorities and what you want students to focus on or grow in the most. Other options could be to provide the full set of rubrics to students for them to self-assess instead, or to set up protocols for peer assessment. Or you could use the proficient level descriptors from each rubric and assess with or without assigning a grade. That way, the focus is on what you hope students will achieve, rather than providing multiple levels for students to fail to meet the objectives in the emerging or developing categories. This style of rubric grading, using only the proficient level, is known as single point rubrics. Ultimately, the way you use the rubrics, assess student work, and even assign grades is up to you and your school's grading policy. The rubrics provided align neatly to each step and task throughout this unit. Make sure that students see that connection as well, so that they understand that the final project for this unit is truly cumulative.